All right, the next step in the, the day in the life of a storm spotter is deploy. So the first thing to know is that your safety is more important than report. If you are ever in a situation where you don't feel safe uh, for what's what's coming at you or maybe nearby you, seek shelter and uh, don't don't try to get in the path of anything that's going to be particularly bad. So uh, another thing too, we've had a lot of we've had some injuries or deaths that have happened with uh, spotters or storm chasers even that have run stop signs just to try to get in a, a good spot to see what's happening and report it. So uh, we the goal here is to keep people safe and we especially want you to stay safe as well. So uh, know that uh, with uh, storm reports, most people just report from home. With uh, hail, it's the stuff that falls in people's yard or sometimes it's just, um, you know, that they have a wind that, that's occurred and knocks a couple tree branches down. Um, just uh, know that those, uh, uh, those reports mostly are coming from people that are just at home and seeing what's happening in their location. People that do mobile spotting is more so in tornado situations. So on days where we need reports of tornadoes, people are getting in an ideal spot to try to uh, to be in the to, to be out there and looking at different cloud formations to be able to report on that to the National Weather Service and uh, let people know what's coming their way. So a lot of times they're not trying to drive into a hailstorm just to get a report of hail, but with tornadoes, that's more likely that uh, these mobile spotting locations are used from that, where they can report wall clouds, funnel clouds, and give us ground truth to what's happening there. So lightning, again, we're talking with the theme of uh, staying safe when it comes to uh, storm spotting. This is a big threat to spotters because we tell you to be in a, a big open area, on, maybe on top of a hill or you know somewhere where you have good visibility. If you're standing out there, you are potentially could get struck by lightning. Uh, you're not as fast as the lightning. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're, if you're staying in your car, you're in a, you're in a good spot to, to try to stay safe. And know that you don't need to report if that, uh, that lightning strike does end up happening. Uh, we don't need reports of the lightning. But our slogan is, when thunder roars, go indoors. If you can hear thunder, you're, you're close enough to get struck by lightning. Okay, so when, if I'm going to be a mobile spotter in a tornadic situation, when should I go to my mobile spotting location? So if you go when the watch gets issued, it's probably going to be too early. This is an example from August 10th from last year where the derecho was still out in central Iowa. And say that you were in Camp Lake in southern Kenosha County, and this line of storms was headed your way. It didn't get there until after 3 o'clock. So you can imagine if you had gone out there and waited for three hours for these storms to come in, that it would have been uh, quite amount of time for you to be kind of wasted you know, standing out or sitting in your car or whatever, waiting for the storms to come in. So somewhere between when the watch gets issued and when a warning gets issued is the time to potentially go out there and look at the storms. However, in certain situations, you, you may not want to go out there and uh, be mobile spotting. So trying to see tornadoes with uh, squall lines like this is extremely difficult to be able to see anything. So a lot of times we just tell people it's, it's safer to just be at home and uh, not try to try to get into the the tornado itself here. So uh, every situation is going to be a little bit different. But for this, you know, kind of consider the the tornado warning. And these quick quick live tornadoes. This came out at 3:44, and the the storm got to this location in Camp Lake at 3:47. So uh, it's very would have been very impossible to try to get a good look at this. This just happened to be a webcam that somebody had out on their dock where they're able to, to view the, the storm coming in. Okay, so using the April 7th hail location, uh, kind of a simulation there, kind of showing the path that that storm took. You know, the blue area here is basically the area where the storm is either done or is in progress. So that's the area where we should be getting storm reports as soon as possible. The, uh, the rest of that area should be that spotters are ready to report if or in their shelter if they're not in a, a safe location, if there's a tornado that's potentially coming their way. But uh, 
that's kind of the goal with getting reports as soon as possible to, to be ready to roll and report to us if you're, if you're in this warning and the, the storm is nearby. The Weather Service, is particularly in Milwaukee, we don't tell spotters when to go out. You're going to have to go out and, and activate on your own. So there are probably times where you, you go out and, and watch, a, watch a storm and there's nothing that ends up happening. There's other times when maybe we weren't predicting a extremely severe tornado to occur, but it ends up producing uh, a long track tornado like the Shatek tornado day where we had a tornado that was on the ground for 83 miles. That was not expected, uh, but that storm ended up getting on a boundary and just taking off and it lasted quite some time. So there are times where you might be able to uh, see, see crazier weather than what we were expecting to have happened that day. So be proactive. It, it helps to build your experience to kind of know better on what to report and what might be happening out there. Get to know radar. So there's a lot of great apps that are out there that will show your location relative to the storms. You can uh, loop the radar to be able to see if the storms are headed towards you or if they're going away from you. There, unfortunately, we can't recommend one radar or weather app over another because it's a lot of, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of great private sector options that are out there. The Weather Service has a radar page, which we'll show in a second here, but uh, there, that's an option to be able to get uh, information from. Radartoweather.gov is that website you can go to to get uh any information on radar. There's a lot more information on it now, but it is relatively new and there's a lot of bugs that are being worked out with it, including latency with how, how long it takes to load up. I know it's, it's maybe not as, as friendly as what you were used to with the previous radar, but there's, we had to upgrade it or change it since flash went away with, uh, you know, on, on computer web browsers. So we, we have, a lot more information that's out there. There's dual polarization data on it. The terminal Doppler radar, which is in Racine County for south of Mitchell, gives another uh, viewpoint to be able to look at storms. So there's a lot of good stuff on it. And uh, with time, people are working on it to try to make it react quicker. And uh, there's a lot of different things you can do on here. So if you have feedback on issues that you're running across with this website, you can send it to nws.radarfeedback at noaa.gov. So reflectivity is the most likely field that you're going to use or look at when it comes to radar. So reflectivity is just telling you how much stuff is out there. So if uh, the radar beam, what happens is there's a little pulse of energy that goes out. It reflects off of whatever is out there and comes back to the radar and based on how much of that stuff, the, the stuff gets reflected back and how long it takes, it prints it out on a map to say, here's how intense the rainfall was in this one location. So the, the higher the, the decibels or DBZs that you see on there, the more stuff there is there, more, more rainfall, more hail, whatever it is that's uh, falling to the ground in that, that spot. So when it comes to the storm and using radar, Typically, what you want to do is be on the south side of the storm. Again, every situation is going to be a little bit different, but this is the Nashville tornado situation here. The storm is moving from left to right, just north of uh, west to east, north of Nashville here. And if you want to be able to see any characteristics associated with the tornado, you'd want to be down on the south side of the storm. So if you see right here where the tornado icon is, that's where the tornado is occurring with that storm. If you're way up on the northwest side of where the storm is, you're not going to be able to see anything. All you're going to see is uh, you're going to see rain. Granted, this was the middle of the night, so again, uh, you won't be able to see much anyways, but say this is in the, the early evening hours and you're trying to be able to get a, a view of this storm. If you're far northeast of the storm, again, all you're going to be looking through between the, the guy with the camera here and the tornado is going to be rain and clouds. If you're on the south, you're going to be able to see it much better, uh, highly likely that you'll be able to see it, and you can report power flashes. So if you're in a good spot, you can report good. If you're in the path, you want to be in your shelter. Uh, we've had this happen before where people have seen a tornado and they've gone to their shelter because it's too close, and they just call us from their shelter to say, hi, I'm at this location, 
and I'm a train spotter. I've, I've seen the tornado, but I'm going, I'm in my basement now and I can't see exactly where it is, but I wanted to report on it. One of the clues that we tell people is if you're looking at a tornado and it's not moving to the left and it's not moving to the right and it's just getting bigger, that means it's headed right for you. So that can be kind of a clue there. So again, most people end up reporting at home. Uh, typically, it's with squall line or damaging winds because the storm motion is so fast that it's hard to, to get out of the path of those storms and you don't want to have trees falling down or blocking your path or landing on your car or anything like that. Your chances of actually seeing the tornado is very minimal. So with, uh, with situations like that, it's probably best just to report from home when it's safe to do so. You can report large hail. Again, heavy rain. If you have a rain gauge at home, you can report that. We'll talk more about that in the next section. And then, again, if you're in the direct path of the tornado, you want to be safe. You don't want to be uh, hit by that tornado. So the main time the mobile spot would be if you are south of a storm that's moving from west to east and uh, you can uh, you know, stay in a safe location where you can view it and report to us. That's the, the main time that you can do the mobile spotting.